just getting the gear out for speeding myself. Now we're going to be floater fishing this morning and we're using the exact same gear so it's very lightweight, um, rod and a net, a bait bucket and a bag which holds literally everything that we need. Um, I'm going to grab a cradle as well uh, that we can share with us, we'll sit on that and use it for the fish. But Speedy's on his way now, I'm going to let him pick his gear to make sure he is confident that I'm not cheating or changing anything anyway. But there's two bags, two rods, two nets, so we're going to be fishing exactly the same thing and I think he's on his way now. Hello, mate. Looking good. <laughs> yes, bro. <laughs> Are well, you ready for some floater fishing? Can't wait. Can't um, wait. Set up is literally... Quite it, simplistic, isn't it? Yeah, that's everything that we need. The only thing is I'll grab the cradle out the mat, um, out the van. Rucksack for you. TX2 12-foot floater rod. Yep. Um, tribal net. I've got exactly the same in here. Dog biscuits are in there. Let's get some fishing done, Brilliant, mate. mate. Yeah. Cannot wait. Get some cart caught. <laughs> awesome. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. Definitely got to have a few, aren't we, mate? This is quite good. So many fish out there. And the big fish as well. Let's get the rods in. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I actually use this for, spot, uh, for baiting up, this rod. Yeah. And it is a lovely action rod. I think what I love about this lake is it's the sort of lake I used to fish when I was a kid. You know when you sort of finish school and you jump on the bike and you have sort of the very basic gear and you one know rod. you're going to go somewhere and catch some fish and That's enjoy it. yourself it, just for a couple of hours. I can completely see what you mean. It's an absolutely beautiful lake. And a lot of your carp theories are kind of like intermixed with match fishing as well. We get to learn a lot of you, and I'm sure you get tips from the match side. 100%. I mean, let's just break this all down. You've got a cart rod, you've got a float, you've got a ledger stop, and you've got a hook, That's and you've it. got some bait. Cannot That's get anything simpler than that. And hopefully, a lot of nice fish as well. Yeah, let's get it in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you are. What do you think of it? Oh. So what I think is I want to try a little twist with what I do on match venues. Right. Uh, I'm trying to present my hook bait as naturally as possible to make it look like all the dog biscuits around it. Yeah. So let me just show you what I'm going to do just for something different. Right, a lasso knot is a very simple, effective way. All you need is line. You don't need to go into the shop and buy accessories to actually attach the bait to it. You just use the line itself very very effective and so natural so all i've got is my hook length line here i've not put the hook on yet the first priority is put the bait on so you form a loop like this yeah okay and form another loop so i've got two loops yeah yeah i put my middle finger through the main loop and i hold on to the back loop and i'm going to put the tail end through the big loop four times pull it tight Give the knot a wet, trim it down yeah. like that, and now we've got a running knot. So all I'm going to get is a dog biscuit, put it over the dog biscuit, and run the knot down, and that's it. Really simple. And then all it's a case of is when you change the dog biscuit, open the loop back up, put a fresh dog biscuit in, close it on. You cannot get a more natural way of presenting bait on the surface. And I think when it comes to surface baits, this is what, what all comes down to pellet waggler fishing for match carp, you catch the bigger fish trying to make your hook bait look as natural as possible because the fish are looking up at the bait, yeah. aren't they? So there's no hindrance to that bait whatsoever. And more or less, I'd imagine you use the same knot, a knotless knot. Yeah. So through the back of the eye, hold the, the dog biscuit there in the loop, and then I'm gonna whip down. Quite a few times really, to ensure that the knot doesn't slip. 
Is that how many times you do it when you tie it? I do or, seven. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be honest, the bizarre thing about it with mattressing on a lot of my hooks, because we're using a thinner line, I might, I might do 18 or 20 turns. Really? Because the line is thinner, it's more susceptible to actually be pulling through the knot and slipping. So Does that help with the, the, the location of the dog biscuit as well? Yes. Because obviously if you tied that, say, seven times, the, the dog biscuit would be here. That's it? right. Okay. Yeah. But also, you need to allow with a lasso a little bit of room for you to open the loop up enough yeah. to get the bait in as well. And so you've got a nice naturally, naturally presenting hook bait there. And then at the other end, fishing, let's say, a two-foot tail, yeah. that seems to be the best length, doesn't it, what you've shown me. Just doing a what we call a figure of eight overhand loop. So just pull that out. So you can see as I'm closing it, it's a figure of eight. Give it a nice wet, nice tug. Do you know, that, that's exactly the same knot I use. Is it? But I tie it differently. That right. had a bit of flair to it, if, if I'm honest. <laughs> I was like, oh, I like that. So, I mean, I, I'm doing something very, very similar to you, but not the lasso. So the presentation well, probably looks about yeah, the same. Yeah, it does. Yeah, very similar. But then and then you've got a boily stop at the bottom of it. That's actually, this This is a fake dog biscuit. Yeah. Um, and that's a dust shot, if you like, maybe a size six, I think. Right, and it um, just lodges inside yeah. it. Yeah, So instead brilliant. of the boily stop, that takes a bit of the buoyancy yep. out. Yeah, Um Loop, it's a knotless knot, as you said, that's seven times round. And then it's funny how you did that figure of eight loop, because mine, so this is how I do it. I form the loop. Once, upside down like yeah that. and i saw you fold that over that's yeah. quite nice because i don't do that you go through twice i put the loop end through twice right which then gives you your figure of eight right so it's quite interesting that the presentation and everything you've done there it's amazing how actually you're looking at something it's, very, it's very so similar. relative isn't it yeah i mean what yeah yeah it's almost identical yeah yeah. But I do like that lasso knot. I yeah. think that's definitely something I'm going to take. Yeah, I, I I just, I'm a big believer that the very big fish in all the lakes that you fish, whether it's a commercial or a carp lake, when it comes to surface baits or near the surface, they're so clever. Yeah. And it's amazing yeah, how many big fish you actually see, but it's very hard to catch them. I think little tweaks like what you're doing there and what I'm doing really does put a few more extra bigger fish in your net. And that's what we're after today, isn't it? We'll so bit, uh, let's uh, see how effective it actually is. Friendly, Are we going to have a competition to actually see saying, yeah. uh, who's going to catch the first carp over ten pound with this setup? The, the loser makes a brew. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to comment. <laughs> well done, mate. First Thank of the you. session. Thank you very much. There you go, mister. Lovely condition, isn't it? Lovely scale markings on it. Right, should we get him back? Technically, when you catch a fish in the cart world, you squat down for a photo with it and hold it over the map. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have a lot to teach him on this session. <laughs> Not quite your PB, but there's definitely a few swimming out there that'll beat it. It's a beautiful fish, isn't it? Yeah, mate. Well done, buddy. Great start. Yeah, thank you. Well done, mate. Nice common, that isn't it? Start. Well done. One one. <laughs>